One of the unique aspects of the Guatemalan referendum has been the separation of their campaigns. There was a budget of 300 million quetzales of public funds allocated to this process, but none of it could be used to advocate for a particular result. Pablo Hurtado, executive secretary of the Guatemalan think tank ACS, explains. First, the 300 million quetzales that took the, the, the consultation process, it was mostly, well, it wasn't spent all of it, but most of what it was spent, it was uh, on organizing the, the election, not necessarily on a campaign. In fact, there was a criteria by the uh, Electoral Supreme Trib uh, Court in, in Guatemala that uh, it wasn't allowed to anybody to do campaign uh, on this process, even if it was for the yes or for the no. It was a weird criteria, as, as we saw, but it was um, accomplished by, by everybody. It was explained that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs did spend on an education campaign with separate funds. They campaigned to voters to participate in the referendum. The Tribunal Supremo Electoral campaigned on how to vote, much like Belize's electoral body. It was eventually the private sector and the NGOs that campaigned for a yes. There was no certainty if you could make campaign for the yes or no vote. And so uh, Casif went to the Tribunal Supremo and asked for a exactly definition of what can and what cannot be done. And the ruling from the tribunal said any interested party can do the campaign that they wish, be it yes or be it no. First, um, we were involved in the, in the process. We worked with the foreign affairs ministers um, on sharing the, the, the importance of the process, but we at ACS, as well as other organizations, we promote the vote for the yes. It was for us. The prohib prohibition was for public servants and political parties. Not for us, that since we are an NGO. Hubo gente o sectores que impulsaron un sí o un no. En el caso del no, no tuvimos conocimiento de alguien. En el caso del sí, hubo grupos de la sociedad que sí, efectivamente, realizó campaña a favor del sí. Y la posición del gobierno. En este caso, el gobierno informó sobre el tema, invitando a la población a que participara y se acercara. But for journalist Cindy Espina, a political reporter for El Periódico, the government campaign did not appear to everyone as unbiased, something that Kasif says could have been expected. How did you view the campaign that was conducted by the government? Um, was it partial, impartial, towards a yes? I always uh, heard um, the, the president, I think, um, the the campaign from the government was was like that, and I, I think that <laughs> that is the reason the people go vote in that way. You know, it's a government always is partial. Uh, we, we, we don't expect a impartial <laughs> opinion from the government. As a journalist, we expect their opinion. It was kind of a mixed feeling because the TSE said clearly you can, to the government, to the Cancillería, you cannot make a campaign for yes or, for, or no vote, just go out, say, participate. The funny thing is that uh, what the Cancillería was doing was state policy. We want to define our borders. So, well, we didn't linger too long on, on that. So uh, we let the TSC say, well, the government cannot externate an opinion. But the Cancillería was clearly saying uh, what we are looking for is to have a final say in all these issues. And everyone obeyed. Everyone played by the rules and you have the outcome. That outcome was a clear yes, with about 1.7 million or 96% of voters voting yes to taking the Guatemalan claim on Belize to the International Court of Justice.